Welcome to our new unit on performance evaluation in machine learning. In this unit, we want to talk about the test error. Other than the training error, the test error is computed on new unseen data, data which was not used um, for training. This is then called test data. So now uh, what we do is we fit the model using the training data. Then we predict the outcome on the test data and evaluate how well we did. What we usually do to obtain uh, the two data sets is we split the data set um, we have in two parts. This is then called holdout splitting. For example, we use two thirds of the data for training and one third for testing. We use the training data for training only, and we use the test data for testing only. This way we get um, the problem. Um, we do not get the problem as in the training error where we support overfitting. The test error will be able to uh, detect overfitting issues. Um, let's consider an example where we have a sinusoidal function plus some measurement error, epsilon. From this function, we draw data, a training set and a test set. The line here shows the sinusoidal function without the error. The dots are the data points from the two respective samples. We try to fit the polynomial models um, uh, to the data. So um, this figure here shows three possible models. Below the figure, we see the mean squared error calculated on the training data. And um, let's see how well the three different models do. The linear model in purple is clearly not a good option. So that's when D is one. The model with a degree of three seems to be pretty fine um, from both the figure and the mean squared error. The blue line looks fairly uh, similar to the gray line, which shows the true underlying structure. The green line, however, which is um, the uh, polynomial with d equal to 9, is a bit um, too wiggly. It tries to go through all the dots in the training data. The test MSE shows that even if the line might fit very well to the training data, it doesn't fit well to the test data. So we see that um, using the test error, we detect that this is not a very good option for us. We can try to plot the MSE for several polynomial degrees up to d equal to 9. On the y-axis here in this plot, we have the MSE. On the x-axis, um, we have the degree. The gray dots and the lines show the test error. The black um, show the training error. So we see that for small degrees, uh, the training and the test error are almost the same. At some point though, the test error goes up while the training error keeps going down. The lower the complexity of our model, uh, the higher the bias of our estimate. In our example, we clearly saw that the linear model was, for example, not doing a good job. The variance, however, is usually lower with less complex models. With increase in model complexity, we usually see a decrease in bias, but an increase in variance. Two complex models overfit the data. This here is just an example, but we uh, usually see that with increasing model complexity, the training error keeps uh, decreasing while the test error first goes down and then starts going up. Um, that's because of overfitting. The sweet spot here is somewhere in the middle um, and has to be estimated um, Yeah, using our performance measures. So um, even though the test error is much better than the training error, it's still not perfect. If we have um, an independent test set, we need this to still come from the same data generating process. Imagine an example where we predict rent prices. Your training data is from Munich and your test data is from Istanbul. 
um, the rent situation in these two cities may be completely different, which means uh, the data generating process is different and the data points are hence not IID. You will not be able to get a good estimate of your generalization error with these two data sets. Another problem um, is the holdout splitting. If you have a data set of a certain sample size, um, by splitting that data set into training and test set, you have less observations for training, um, and this usually means a worse model. This is especially a problem when you have few data points to begin with. It does, however, not only have a negative impact on the model, but also on the ge generalization error estimate. The smaller the test set, the higher the variance of the estimate. Finally, um, we have the issue that usually our holdout set, our test set, is chosen randomly. By chance, the test set can be quite strange. Maybe uh, we end up with only observations at one end of the distribution. In the rent example, we might end up with only really small but pricey apartments, for example. The chance of that ha happening is increases, obviously, with decreasing sample size. In machine learning, we are in a pretty weird situation. We are usually given only one data set. At the end of our model selection and evaluation process, we will likely fit one model to exactly that complete data set. Um, as training error evaluation does not work, we have nothing left um, to evaluate exactly that model. Holdout splitting and resampling also are tools to estimate the future performance. All of the models produced during that phase of evaluation are intermediate results. Keep that already in mind now. Uh, it will help avoid confusion when we move on to related concepts like cross-validation and bootstrap.